Welcome back and thank you for staying tuned in. The COVID-19 pandemic caused the government of St. Lucia to quickly adjust its mode of operation to rely more heavily on its virtual platforms for business continuity in the provision of vital services to the public. Due to health and safety protocols, government employees connected via their digital networks while working from home or teleworking. But how prepared was the government service for this mode of operation and did it allow for productivity gains? More in this report from Glenn Simon. Digital technology is critical for ensuring business continuity. During the COVID-19 pandemic, both public and private sectors acknowledged the importance of adequate digital development to support business continuity, remote business and learning. According to an official from the World Bank Group, Teleworking creates greater levels of resilience for businesses, but requires a well-developed telecommunications and digital infrastructure, upskilled workers, clear communication, and an employee support plan. Systems Administrator at the Department of Finance, Leeson Clovis, said working remotely is not new for officers in the Department of Finance. We had already set up what we call a VPN or virtual private network that actually allows us to log into our network in order to access those services and actually a lot of our staff, well mostly the heads of our department, have had access to the VPN long before COVID, right? So it is not anything new for us. In fact, it was actually an advantage because when the time came for us to implement it because of COVID, the system was already in place. Clovis added that working from home allowed for greater levels of productivity during the COVID-19 pandemic by allowing officers to continue working on projects from the comfort of their homes while observing health and safety protocols. However, he highlighted one major disadvantage with teleworking. I've always believed that there has to be a separation between work and family life or at home. And you would find that even prior to COVID, um, you know, they have a lot of persons that if you want to call them workaholics, or you know, they, they're very um, passionate about what they do. And so you find that, you know, from working from 8 to 4.30, and then you leave your office, you go home, and then you continue doing work from home because you have that avenue. Um, I believe that, you know, it affects family life. Teleworking has registered more advantages than disadvantages for business continuity, from reduced commuting hours reduced demand for rental spaces to increase productivity and competitiveness. The system's administrator sees great value in retaining a blended approach to work post this pandemic. Yeah, I think it is something that needs to continue. Um, as I said to you, it, is, it was something that we implemented and I know as well that um, has been implemented in other departments, I believe, throughout the government of St. Lucia, through um, GITS. Um, so, you know, at the end of the day, it is a, a way to advance in terms of how we do business, even in, 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 in the current um, technological age. Clovis stressed that maintaining a proper work-life balance is extremely important, where time is allocated to work, family life, and relaxation. From the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, Glenn Simon reporting. As the challenges arising from COVID-19 continue to rear their ugly heads, many youth groups continue to aspire to engage with their members as well as youth within their respective communities. The Sufra Youth and Sports Council is one such organization that is trying to generate a sense of positivity to youth within the community. The SYSC put together a Be Amazing poster and essay competition where youth between the ages of 5 to 9 and 10 to 13 were to explain what positive impacts COVID-19 has had on their family, community or country. On Tuesday, May 8th, the winners of the Be Amazing essay competition and poster competition, Joy Fletcher and Jody Bob, received their prizes for emerging victorious. PRO of the Sufra Youth and Sports Council, Shanae Mesme, explained that the council is trying to remain actively involved with the youth and the community during the COVID-19 pandemic. The, um, due to all the um, coronavirus pandemic and everybody having to be inside, we came up with that initiative just to engage the young children of Sufra around the Sufra area to be constructive with the time and to come up with something creative. So we had a be amazing um, poster challenge and we had a be amazing essay competition which was well um, 
participated in by the children and also fair. It's just um, like I said, it was an initiative to allow the children to express themselves, and I feel one of the topics for the um, the um, essay competition we had to do around coronavirus and the impact it had around the community, and not the community per se, but Saint Lucia on the whole. So that was um, that part of the essay. So it, it, it was just an initiative to get the ideas of the children and the perspective on what's going on. The initial feedback to the competition was not very encouraging. However, Mesmer indicated that with lots of prodding and social media advertising, the council was able to receive a fairly reasonable number of participants. The winners of the competition walked away with monetary prizes and certificates while all other participants received certificates of participation. The winner of the Be Amazing essay competition was Joy Fletcher. Um, the prize money was $200 and we gave um, a certificate. And for the Be Amazing poster challenge, which um, was won by Jody Bob, she won a cash prize of $150 and a certificate also. And we also gave all the participants a certificate also just for appreciation. The participants in the competition were marked and graded by four teachers who are not members of the Youth and Sports Council to ensure fairness. In the upcoming days, the Sufra Youth and Sports Council will be hosting Youth Connect, an initiative which will help highlight and showcase young inspirational people of the community as well as young entrepreneurs. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Jenny Gonzag. The Library Wellness Center had been closed for retrofitting works from September 2nd, 2019 under the Smart Health Facilities projects aimed towards safer, greener and more sustainable facilities. The works are now complete and the center will reopen for services to the public effective June 15, 2020. The Ministry of Health and Wellness apologizes for the delay due to the COVID-19 pandemic and thanks residents and clients for their patience during the project. As of June 12, 2020, the Rich Fall Wellness Center will be closed for retrofitting under the Smart Health Facilities Project. As a result, health services will be relocated to an alternate location in a building at the Larissus Denry Junction. The retrofitting work is expected to last approximately three months. The scope of works include repairs and retrofitting to make the facilities more energy efficient and adaptable to the effects of climate change. Effective June 22, 2020, all health services will be available at the new location. This is the Hot 7 TV Nightly News. When we come back, we'll have school sports and the latest weather update.